this week on CU Quick Flicks. Across the globe, raging wildfires are more common and more aggressive than ever before. There are a lot of questions on what causes forest fires. In this episode, we will dive more into detail on this combination of nature's powerful forces and its true destruction. The Yosemite wildfire has made global headlines for weeks. With fears for the World Heritage Site and its iconic giant sequoia trees. The Rim Fire in Yosemite National Park has decimated over 228,000 acres, more than seven times the size of San Francisco. Disco dry conditions, overgrown bush, rough terrain has all resulted in the fourth largest wildfire in Californian history. On average, more than 100,000 wildfires burn 4 to 5 million acres of land across the U.S. every single year. America is a wildfire hotspot, but one of the biggest blazes to strike the world was the Great Black Dragon Fire, which burnt more than 18 million acres across China and Russia. So what causes these wildfires to be triggered in the first place? Well, for wood to catch light, it has to reach a critical temperature 300 degrees Celsius. This is known as its flash point. At that temperature, the wood releases flammable hydrocarbon vapors, which mixes with oxygen in the air. It combusts and forms fire. So where does this source of heat actually come from? The most common natural source is lightning strikes. But even hot volcanic lava can cause fires too. And earthquakes can also be the guilty concrete. As rocks rub against each other during a quake, the abrasive friction can cause sufficient ignition temperatures. It's a bit like Mother Nature's very own giant match. When the two surfaces are rubbed together, it creates enough heat to start a fire. But the ignition source can even come from space. As a meteorite passes through the atmosphere and impacts the Earth, it can create a huge amount of friction and therefore, heat. In fact, a devastating global fire sparked by a meteorite impact is one theory for the dinosaur mass extinction. But it may come of no surprise that human activity plays a major role in starting fires in the state of California. Of the 20 largest wildfires, 10 were started by humans.
It's not just arson and campfire carelessness that are causing these fires. Train wheels on the track, power lines, and even shooting a target with a gun can create a spark. So are these wildfires becoming more severe? Well, up until the 1970s, many natural fires were suppressed in American national parks. And what that did is it just created a massive buildup of dead plant material. So if a fire did get hold, it was far more devastating. Nowadays, the forests are thinned out with controlled fire to minimize the dead plant material and reduce their natural fuel source. One reason California has been struck so bad in the past is the lack of precipitation. Some year has been the driest year on record, with just 11 centimeters of rain in the first six months of the year. Higher temperatures, mismanaged forests, less rain, and an increase in human activity is all likely to be increasing the severity and number of wildfires. So is there anything good about these fires? Well, yes. Some species love and need the fire. Fire beetles have an amazing ability to detect the infrared radiation given off by the flames. They hone in on the blaze even while it's still going. And the females lay their eggs in the charred wood. Once hatched, the larvae feed on the dead wood. But even the plants themselves can benefit from fire. In fact, some species depend on it. The intense heat helps open up their cones and release their seeds. Some species actually have flammable resin in their leaves to encourage fire, because without it, they couldn't pass on their genetic legacy. So although wildfires do cause a huge amount of devastation, some species do benefit. However, we can take precautions and do our part to reduce wildfires. If you're enjoying the great outdoors, make sure to extinguish campfires completely by drowning them with water, stirring the ashes, and feeling for any residual heat. Planning is crucial. If you're in an area prone to wildfires, sit down with your family and create an evacuation plan. No multiple escape routes from your home. Designate a meeting place and ensure everyone understands the plan. Prepare an emergency supply kit with essentials such as water, non-perishable food, medications, important documents, and a first aid kit. Be ready to grab it and go at a moment's notice. Create defensible space around your home by clearing away dry vegetation, leaves, and flammable materials. This creates a buffer zone that can slow down the spread of a wildfire. Wildfires are a formidable force, but by being prepared, informed, and vigilant, you can greatly reduce the risks to yourself and your community. Let us not forget, in the face of a relentless and formidable foe, 
There are those who stand between us and the destructive force of wildfires. These are the brave and dedicated firefighters. From the scorching heat of summer to the bitter cold of winter, wildfire firefighters are always on call. They rush toward danger when others are fleeing, demonstrating unparalleled courage. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to these selfless individuals who put their lives on the line to protect our communities, homes, and natural landscapes.